Thirsty, the number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is Two Up and Two Down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Two Up and Two Down. And today we are doing the masseuse from season five. So, Tony, over to you. Start us off with your first up. Glad I'm going first on this one, actually. Um, I know I say that a lot, but this is the one where I, I definitely agree. The masseuse, written by a friend of the show, Peter Melman, season five. Feels season six to me a little bit. I got to say, I don't know. It's season five, but uh, we'll get there. Um, my first up, I mean, <laughs> listen, you want to talk. There's one thing I will say about this episode. George delivers. And I think uh, the double dating scene is one of the best Georges you're going to get. I mean, put George. I always say put George behind the desk or in front of the desk, as people like to say. Put him, put him at a, put him in a restaurant eating, and it's all, it's, I'm game on, I'm there. I mean, you know, <laughs> I never met your sister, but these are the hard and fast rules, darling. The T's get a little code. That exchange right there is Costanza. <laughs> oh my God, I can just, I can watch that just lied over and over again when he points at a T, and he, as after he tells her about the sister lied. I mean, you want to talk about delivery. Uh, how Jason Alexander not win an Emmy? That line alone should have got him an Emmy. Uh, you know the way Risotto's laughing at him. You know, sweetheart, I was exaggerating. He says to the late. I mean, he says to Coolidge there. I mean, unbelievable. Uh, just one of the best Georges of all time in that scene. I mean, that's right there for me. Uh, it's 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 unbelievable. I just I have nothing else to say about it. It's just so so good. The way he points at a T. The way he's just you know commanding the table. Showing her the other side, how they set that up earlier, that he just goes right into it. Uh, unbelievable, uh, Costanza. That's that's my first stop. Uh, there's such a great scene there, so definitely worthy of an up. Uh, Chris, over to you. What, what do you got for your first? Love that scene. I, I wrote George on fire. Like he was on fire. All right, I got a lot of ups. You know, I don't. I don't know. Tony, season six. He already is dropping some hints here, which is very fascinating. Here's what I'll say. I thought Elaine brought it. Not she looked hot, looked as good as she ever looked. I, I'll say that. You know, I love the name Dion. Dion Rifkin's so cool. I love when they were going back and forth with the names. I know there were a couple scenes there, but I got to keep that as one. I mean, her, you know, little Stewie Rifkin likes going shopping with his mother. I mean, that's as good as Elaine gets. I mean. So comedic, just delivered that line. And then obviously going through the list of names was just having a a story for each name, right? Stuart, Todd, Alex, you know, this guy chewed his gum. Da-da. I mean, incredible lane, like I said. I love her reading the uh, whatever football magazine that was, like getting ready for the game. Like, you know, how can you not be into a lane? Period. End of story. I mean. Looks great. Going to a football game with you. The whole thing. I loved it. And then she capped it off with a little Stewie line, which, you know, we talked to uh, our, our friend then, Joel Rifkin, incredible actor. So loved Elaine. I thought she brought it. You mentioned George. I think Elaine was right on par at that level. So uh, she's my first up for sure. We had a great uh, time speaking with uh, Anthony uh, Sitaro, who played uh, Joel Rifkin in that episode. So definitely worthy to check out that uh, interview. So, Tony, uh, back to you. Uh, what do you got for your next up? Totally agree. This is a, this is a really good Elaine. I agree. And, and, and solid points. I wrote that down, too. She's 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 top. She's good in this episode for sure. On the couch with him a few times and the whole thing there. Uh to, to, to producer Chris's point too, the great conversation with uh, Justaro about that. Um, 
my second up, uh, it's different than my first, but it does involve George. Uh, I thought, like I said, I thought George had a great episode. I thought the George and Jerry conversation, you know, where Jerry hesitates. Uh, you hesitated. You hesitated. <laughs> Jerry's, Jerry's like, Jerry, has to tell, she doesn't like you. Well, what did she say? She said she doesn't like you. Like, so good. <laughs> He's like, was it the sister? You know, let me tell you something. That sister's getting tickets. He goes back to that. Uh, you know, he gets so mad. He's like, she said that. She said she doesn't like me. Jerry's like, she said she doesn't like you. You know, those exact words, you know. Uh, I, I love that. You know, just that conversation in Monks, how George, you know, is still harping on. It brings back the sister again, which I love. Uh, I like how Jerry at first is just trying to just let it go, but he catches up. He's all right. You know what? Just like it. What do you do about it? Uh, very good back and forth between those two. Uh, you know, it's 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 what you always want to see in monks. They didn't overdo it to Howard's point. It wasn't too long. wasn't too much going on there. It was just pretty much like you know, finds out she doesn't like him. Now he knows for sure. Uh, it's a very good scene. Uh, that's that's my uh, my second up. Another great pick there. So yeah, thanks, Tony. Uh, so, Chris, over to you. What's your second up? Wonderful scene. I mean, did Melman bring it or did Melman bring it? Uh, to your point, not like, everything was just boom, 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 boom. All right. And speaking of Melman, great writing. I had that as well. You know, I love love Jerry. No, oh, the sex is fabulous. But he, he wanted a massage. Like, just two knuckleheads reviewing the night. I incredible stuff. Uh, let's see here. Rifkin, da, 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 risotto is great. You know what? The opening scene for me, loved it. Set the tone. It's all, look at me. I'm, I'm all about setting the tone, but it's, it's true. Um, Elaine at pendant calling Jerry, you know, on the house phone, talking about the throw up thing, which was always fun, uh, which was great. And it was just a smart way to, to introduce Joel Rifkin as well. And then just to put a to put a nail on the you know the cherry on top, whatever phrase you want to use, Lisa Pesce and uh our boy Hiram, may he rest in peace. Love, you know, I love the pendant crew. I mean, what an entrance. Oh, where's your boyfriend? You know, better keep him on your good side. And you know, and then obviously Hiram, I think, says something like, wouldn't sleep with your back to him. Love that. I love those two teaming up and then Elaine gets real feisty. I mean, Elaine at Pendant, what's better? You know, her in that little office talking to Jerry and then those two coming in really set the tone for the episode. Uh, the whole throw up thing as well. I totally forgot about that, but now that I'm thinking about it, it was, it was always interesting as well. So a lot of fun stuff to kick off the episode without any waste and just you using the Pendant guys, just, just use them just right, right? And then, boom, move on to the next. Incredible job by Melman. Great, great scene again. Uh, so, yeah, uh, another good up uh, mentioned here. Uh, so, unfortunately, that's it with the ups. Uh, we got to do the downs now. Um, it sounds like such a great episode. Tony, what do you got? What's your first down? It, it is a good episode, but there are downs. Let's not get too carried away here. Uh, but I agree with Howard. That's a great scene. Uh, and yeah, Hiram, uh, RIP, and Lisa. Ohio loves Pendant, and, and, I, and I do too. And I like that they have the cohort. You know, we don't need Lippman coming in. This is just, you know, a downtime. She's on the phone. End of the day, it's probably, you know, three, four o'clock. She's wrapping up, getting ready to go meet Jerry, see what's going on. Yeah, we've all been there in the city working uh uh anywho uh great up um listen my first down uh i didn't love the k-man so much in this episode and i'll, I'll give i'll give the one big a couple of downs there but i think the one that i don't really he's he's telling the whole story about going to the game and, and jumping and grabbing the field goal ball and he hurt his back just so we can get the massage right we gotta why does he need a massage and and to, to 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 kind of shoehorn that story in, I you know we love Melman, but Melman sometimes tries to catch lightning in a bottle a lot. Uh, you know this is not Cracker Jack where you go and Cracker Jack big toe story. This is not uh, fantasy baseball. You know I punched Mickey Mickey story right. This is he's trying even Kramer, Kramer can't make this story work. You know I jumped for the ball and I I caught it and I heard my. I, that just didn't play with me. Yeah, even even Michael Richards couldn't sell it to me. Uh, I thought it fell flat. I, I thought they were trying to get one of those stories out of this and they just didn't get it. Um, and so I, I think it, it shows when it doesn't land, it shows that, you know, 
Michael Richards is human. He, he can't make something out of nothing. And you know what? Sometimes Melman, he tried to bring something in there and it just didn't work. Uh, it moved the story along, but it wasn't funny. And, and Jerry always says, you got to be funny. You don't just have something in there. Um, so that's my first down is that Kramer kind of retelling the whole story about the football game and uh, how he hurt his back in the seats and then jumped against a field goal. And uh, that, you know, if they somehow showed that, you know, a la him getting hit in the ball in the dugout, maybe that would have been kind of funny, but they probably couldn't work out the logistics of that. So I understand why they didn't. But uh, anywho, uh, that's my my first down. Uh, I'll agree with you there that they missed maybe an opportunity to show Kramer falling, uh, you know, doing one of his famous Pratt falls. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Tony. Uh, Chris, over to you. What do you got for your first down? Yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed that. I mean, to not to dispute it, but he, he hurt his back because of the unforgiveness of the seats. Remember, he talked about he that. He does say that, which I also didn't like either. I didn't like the whole thing. I didn't <laughs> like. I didn't like that. And if you want to go there, I didn't like the massage she got either. And talking to Jerry about the massage and everything with the grapes. The grapes are okay, but a little too much. We'll get there. Uh, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed that. And him needling Jerry and them going crazy with each other. Loved it. Loved it. But I didn't give that as an up. So let me go to my dad. Actually, I'm going to take it down. It's gonna, And this is a Tony down, guys, just so you know. When Jerry's uh, explaining how he hurt his neck and he goes, you know, I was brushing my teeth and I was moving, <laughs> moving my whatever side to side. That's something that probably drives Tony crazy. And I kind of half enjoyed it, but I just want to take it as a down, just to, just to, as a nod to my partner here. It was kind of silly. Like, that's how he hurt his neck. Like, come on. So, Jerry, uh, the brushing his teeth thing. And I'll double down. Why not? On uh, Jerry a little bit. Like, a little forced, because that that's kind of a little nitpick one there. The um, his joke about going to Idaho, you know, I'm going to Idaho. I want the potatoes. You know, I like carrots. Like I don't know. Just they didn't need it. It, it felt just like a, a force little stand up bit that they could have they could have moved on from. Lame analogy there that they uh, snuck in or used. Uh, so yeah, good downs. Uh, over to you, uh, Tony. What's your second down? Totally agree with both points, and I'm gonna just pile on because as I kind of alluded to. I don't even, I don't like Jerry in this episode. I, I think, listen, a lot of times this happens. It happens with these episodes where they have a good premise. And even in season five, it happens. I mean, they have a good premise. You know, Jerry wants to get a massage. Or Harris seemed to like this whole bit as it ran through the episode. I thought it got kind of just enough is enough when he gets on the table. I like when he picks the table up and puts it down. Nice piece of equipment. But the whole, like, puts a hand on. And, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. A forcible massage. Like, that whole thing. I didn't really love the Kramer and him back and forth. <clears throat> I know what they were going for, obviously. Um, I, I, I didn't I didn't like any of it. I, I thought it was, in a weird way, similar to him trying to find out Mulva's name. And when they kind of kept having scenes where he tried to find out her name. But that was, I don't know. I thought that played better. The Mulva stuff was much funnier because it was a bigger payoff. This was just like, he's dating a masseuse. She won't massage him. Great premise. Okay, let's 15 minutes of it. I don't know. Uh I, I didn't I didn't love this Jerry. I think that's where I'm going. And I, I, I think um it just it's a little bit drawn out. Uh he did a couple of scenes with it. Uh I, I love to have Coolidge on. Uh, I didn't think she played it that well either, to be honest with you. Uh the back and forth she did with him about the massaging. I can't do it. You're forcing me to massage. Like, I don't know. It it it, it I said this. I feel like a season six episode to me. I think that's where it kind of comes in. It, it's 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 getting a little bit, a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, that's my uh, that's my second down. So Jerry Jerry's the down. You said okay. Jerry's the down. Basically, yeah. yeah. I gave every scene he was in as as it. But yeah, Jerry's it's a big down. That's a big matzo ball. That's my down. Jerry's my down. Well, take it take it away, Chris. What's your next down here? It's funny you mentioned Malva. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, the masseuse went up against Matlock that night. Guess who was on Matlock that night? Dolores herself. So uh, incredible episode back in uh, November 18th of 93. So the second down, you know, he mentioned Jerry. I, I like Jerry. A couple down moments, like his Claude Seinfeld, like names like that. But yeah, and I'd love to have her on the show, but I'm going to take Stifler's mom as a down. I, I don't know. And again, I think of what, all these things are probably intentional, but. I don't know. There's just I didn't see any 
chemistry between Jerry and her. Um, you know, how can you say that? Like, she, I don't know. She just annoyed me. Maybe that was the goal. But, and again, she moved, went out to bigger and better things, I guess, Stiffer's mom. But even watching now, I can't even picture Stiffer's mom. She just looks like a completely different person. Um, and no offense, I don't know. I probably wouldn't want to get a massage from her either. Um, but the K-Man, everyone else did. So who knows? I don't know where I'm going with that. But something was off about her. Uh, but again, she's just a guest star um, in an episode packed full of them, right? We, Like I said, we had uh, Sestero. We had Hiram. We had Pesce. Like, you can have a down episode. You can have a down guest star like this and still we'll get to it. The grades. I think you know where I'm going with this is that uh, it's not going to ruin things for me. So uh, she's memorable, but you know, didn't love her. So uh, Coolidge is my second down. Which is a shame because, you know, again, we enjoyed her and so much other stuff. Like you said, American pie uh, that came on, you know, years later after that. And then, um, you know, the other shows that, that she's done. Um, yeah. And, Lisa Edelstein, she was the other, uh, George's girlfriend. Amazing job in this uh, episode, I thought. Um, so, guys, let's wrap it up. Uh, Tony, back to you. Uh, what do you got for your uh, grade and final thoughts here? I kind of gave Edelstein some props there in that opening scene I was referring to. She's laughed a lot. I mean, I didn't like that they, they flashed back to Risotto when Jerry said Risotto girl. I mean, let us, let us know or not know. What are we doing? I hate those flashbacks. If you watched it, you watched it. If you didn't catch up. Uh, anywho, listen, you, I think you guys might know where I'm going with my grade here. This is this episode, it, as I mentioned, I thought this was an all time George, just just that that up I gave uh, alone gives me George, uh, you know, high, high echelon. I've already gone through the Jerry stuff I didn't like, I didn't love the Kramer stuff. I to Harris point, I did like Elaine a lot, which is sterile, and the whole name stuff was great, and the pendant stuff was great. I thought Elaine delivered, I thought. I thought, like I said, George delivered. Um, but th the rest, there's not, to me, I'm, I'm definitely not seeing A material here. I know it's season five. I'm way below A. I'm teetering in the, you know, the conversion. I go back to the conversion. I have to go back to the conversion. The conversion, I, I said, was all George. Everything else wasn't great. This is very similar, and but not even as good. So for me, this is this is this is kind of, you know, Average-ish. Uh, I got two written down. I kind of want to go with the lower one, just the needle O'Hara. But I'm between a couple here. I think, you know, I just this this episode O'Hara's point. He just gave. If you think uh, the conversion's better, let's see. Give oh, the, the conversion's definitely better by far. Uh, Coolidge doesn't deliver. O'Hara just said. I said Jerry doesn't deliver. I don't think Kramer really does much. The will call guy is kind of funny. Um, you know. Uh, I like George when he takes the table that hey, you know, gets the cap, hells the cap. I love George. I always get back to George on this one, but everything else just falls enough short that I'm giving the masseuse a C plus, a C plus for the masseuse. <laughs> I had a B minus, but I, I, I am talking myself all the way down to wow, a C plus for the masseuse. I thought it'd be minus at first, but I just talked myself into a C plus here. I don't know what I did. All right. Well, we're going to mark that down, but I want to go straight to you, Chris. What do you got? What's your reply here? That is that is shocking right there. I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe him and Melman had a little, uh, I don't know, a little spat or something. But uh, this is Melman at his best. But I think, to Tony's point, if he doesn't think Jerry's good in this episode, that's going to weigh it down. Um, but – this was peak George and peak Elaine. They, they, I don't think they really can get much better than that. Uh, I thought I actually thought Elaine stole the episode. George was I love with George when they went back after their conversation and George saw hey! like that. Him seeing Jennifer Coolidge there and her annoyance was was incredible. Elaine brought it. You mentioned the the, the Jerry and George at Monks. I love the Kramer in the robe. Him needle and Jerry, don't you dare talk to me. I mean, I like I love those two needling each other and battling each other twice. I thought that was great. Risotto thing that was odd. You know, Janet, you got to edit that out. Uh, Sleep Collective wouldn't have done that. 
Um, but I thought Risotto was great. She was a great one to bring back. Wasn't too much. And I loved her just like kind of flirt with George and then getting so angry. Like, does everyone have to like you? I mean, Edelstein was, Edelstein brought it. Pesce brought it. Hiram, of course, when uh, nobody funnier. Rifkin, forget about it. And not only that, you got to give some, some, some props here to the giant stuff and Bob Shepard. Tony always talks about this and, you know, it feels like he's dinging this episode on a, on a, on a few things that he shouldn't be. You know, the brushing the teeth. I think Jerry was, I thought Jerry brought it in this episode. You know, the forceful massage stuff. I know that they say it wouldn't get made today. It was like referencing, you know, male dominance, all that crap. I don't care. It, it was funny. You know, he just wanted a massage. It was so silly. You know, he was getting upset that she was, you know, wanted to make out with him instead of giving him a massage. I just, I love Jerry in this. I love Kramer. I thought all four were were great, quite frankly. They're not great good, okay? I'm not going to go crazy. And then, obviously, I think the guest stars did really well, except Coolidge to some degree, just didn't love. But I thought the writing was so spot on. I thought it moved really quickly. And like I said, that opening scene got me hooked. And that's important. So I had three grades here. There's no way I'm going in the C range. For me, I'm giving the masseuse an A minus. So we're, we got a big difference here. This is season five. This is primetime Seinfeld. The, you're not going to find, you know, you're going to average an A minus for season five. Let's put it that way. It is uh, to get lower than that. Uh, I can't do. Uh, so there we go. A minus for the masseuse. Yeah, and like you said, uh, I think that that's the the, the grade because I normally don't choose sides, uh, you know, uh, during these uh, uh, discussions. But uh, I got to go with Chris on this one with an A minus for uh, <laughs> for this episode. I mean, like you said, uh, Bob Shepard, the I stuff that Bob he Shepherd did with that. I should have said it. I, I, I mean, I LT looking up into the crowd when he I hears it, with, with Joel Rifkin here. <laughs> that that was just awesome stuff, and then it's like. Who would uh, call me here <laughs> by uh, Joel Rifkin? Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, normally don't choose sides, but going with Chris on this one. And I appreciate everybody uh, checking us out. Comment if you want uh, on YouTube. And uh, we'll see everybody on our next one.